Okay, everyone, we are live on Facebook. Welcome to this week's Love Seat. And I am so happy to be here and be joined by the beautiful, multi-talented Rachel McGarry. Welcome, Rachel. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. And I want to tell you a little bit about Rachel before we get going, because she's a pretty cool chick. And uh, we're going to be you know, segueing in a minute and talking about this idea of rest as medicine, which I am so into. I can't wait for this conversation. And Rachel is a Canadian devotional chant artist. The first thing I actually want to ask is, what is that, Rachel? because <laughs> so, that sounds so cool yes uh, well a devotional tent artist for me it's it's part of yoga so it's it's the lineage of bhakti yoga the yoga of devotion so i chant um i lead kirtans which is community groups that come together to chant the names of the divine and so we sing to kali to durga to krishna um and come together in community to build this beautiful heart-centered practice so that's what a devotional chant artist is um yeah for me <laughs> that's, be that's beautiful and you're also a yoga teacher and owner of sanctuary dot is I, and and you're also a musician uh you know you have an album out you're doing all of these amazing things so so um actually i want to hear all about that and i want to hear all about how you got into it and i'm pretty dying to get into the chat about rest as medicine so let's start there and then, mm -hmm. then we can weave in all of the other amazing things. Mm -hmm. so Wonderful. Yeah. So I'd love to start with a quote that's inspired me in a lot of the work that I do in with restorative yoga. And uh, a studio owner that I worked with a few years ago said this, and it stuck with me. And, and she said, rest is a radical concept in our society, and it's the medicine for modern times. Let's rest say that again. Yeah, rest is a radical concept in our society and the medicine for modern times. Ooh. And I totally, this resonates so much with me um, in terms of it being a radical concept. It's a simple concept for health, for healing, for well being. And we dismiss it. You know, the pharmaceutical companies make so much money when really maybe rest could actually take the edge off that a little bit if we took care of ourselves and, and rested when we needed to rest and really nourished our shell, ourselves because our bodies know how to take care of themselves. And simply by resting and coming into this place of balance, of homeostasis, of rebalancing, we can eliminate a lot of health issues. And um, this is why I feel like rest is medicine because Ooh. it can actually change our physiology. Um, yeah, and we'll talk about how. We will talk about how, and we will talk about how in a, in a, in a moment. And, um, and I'd love to stay with the conceptual part a little bit, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, or the, the provocation here of rest is medicine. And if I just tune into my own experience, um, the, my journey, especially over the last few years, and actually, especially with COVID last year, I had my 94 year old dad here in Canada. Then I flew back to New Zealand with him. I was in the middle of nowhere with him for a while, then coming back here. And I, and I found myself, especially when, when I was with my dad, really wanting to tune into the rhythms of the season I was in, the land I was on, and just listening to my body when it was saying, hey, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. And which is actually a radical thing to do because I notice in myself and in so many of the women that I'm surrounded with, and, and if I think way, way, way back into my corporate past, you know, my working past, mm -hmm. um, these ideas of pushing through, of, um, you know, keep, keep going. Um, you know, I, I had a friend saying to me the other day that in fact, she was she was inviting me to exercise in the evenings and I was saying I actually just I can't exercise in, in the evenings in winter time. I'm ready to my body is ready to finish at around four o'clock in the afternoon. It's slowing down and I, mm -hmm. I just don't want to rev it up again. It's not. Yeah. And, and yet it's very it's countercultural. It absolutely is. It absolutely mm -hmm. is. I think we have a very 
masculine kind of view of this doing this pushing this you know pushing through and and it doesn't work for us it doesn't work for us as women it doesn't work for us as humans actually um <laughs> and i think that um we when we are in this place when we're so busy and we're moving from thing to thing to thing just to getting things done we're really i mean we're expending our energy often for others often for our work the causes we believe in, our businesses, our families. And so we're giving, we're constantly giving and, and not so much receiving or not so much giving to ourselves. So when we, this is the, the radical part of it is to turn that giving towards ourselves. I think it's a radical concept, as sad as that sounds, it, it is. Um, <laughs> but when do we replenish our own energies otherwise or nourish ourselves otherwise if we don't kind of take this, um, challenge this radical step forward of self-care yeah yeah mm -hmm. i i completely agree and and uh I, i've got a couple of comments and questions to ask about that and i do notice that uh, there are several people who have joined us live so welcome if you're here live then uh, let us know who you are and and where you are and if you have any thoughts and feelings about this idea of rest as med rest as medicine or questions for, for rachel then don't hesitate to to share those and of course, mm -hmm. also, if you're watching the replay, let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from, because it, it um, I don't know, it adds something different to the energy of, of this container when, when folks are joining in. So, yeah, I, I, it's, it's curious, because I've, I've noticed um, something quite, quite big and different in, in my world, um, you know, alongside some of the other journeys I've been on, I've been uh, really over the last four years since we moved back to North America, wanting to really reimagine my relationship to my work and my life. And, um, and those things are, are um, not overly separate for me. Work happens in the house like it happens for so many of us these days. Uh, everyone's here. And uh, I used to very much be a, you know, work, 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 work till the deadline kind of person. What I notice now that I'm, I'm that I've un started to unhook from that. You know, sometimes those <laughs> tendencies can sneak up and be there. Is that when I've created more space for true for true rest? When I'm when I'm connected to my body. Firstly, it's harder for me to push through because that is just it's no longer there. It's harder for me to push through. Secondly, I really see now that when I'm pushing through, um, I'm not getting the greatest results. I'm not, you know, I'm not as powerful in my energy expenditure when I am expending my energy when I'm really in the space to do so and that it feels good and I have energy for it rather than depleting it across the board. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really curious. I know some of the things that, that I do and I probably just accidentally stumbled, up, stumbled across them. So two questions, what are some things that folks can do? And I know you're gonna lead us in practice at the, at the end of the session. Yeah, so I stick am. around folks and-, and, leave some <laughs> and so what are some of the things that folks can do? Well, there's lots of, there's lots of different practices and ways to come into rest. And um, I'd love to back just back up just a tiny bit and just Please. a little more about like what happens to our bodies when we don't take the time to rest. Like you mentioned, we don't we don't give our best. We can't give our best. And maybe there's less mental clarity. Maybe we, we can't tap into our creativity because we're too taxed and we need to be in a place more of rest. Um, to be able to do that and of balance to be able to tap into our own creativity. But our nervous systems, they stay in a state of chronic stress. When we're when when we don't rest, we elevate um, our, our our nervous system, our sympathetic nervous system is kicking in and we're constantly in this overdrive. So our body's ability to heal itself is compromised, our immune system is compromised, we can start having trouble sleeping, we can feel like increased pain or inflammation in the body. Um, sometimes we can experience weight gain and, and, and this whole brain fog thing. So all of this can happen when wow. we are in this elevated state of stress and we don't take the time out to kind of relax and rebalance. But there's good news <laughs> because here's yes. what happens when we rest, right? <laughs> so when we rest, the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in. So this is the, the part of our nervous system that activates the relaxation response in the body. 
And so that encourages the body's natural healing abilities, this ability to return to balanced homeostasis, our heart rate lowers, our muscles in our body start to relax, the mind starts to settle and quiet. Even our digestion improves because our bodies aren't busy dealing with all of these stress hormones. It can now start to do the healing and digestion, the rest and digest kind of function. And we sleep better. That's one of the things that I think I hear most often when students leave my classes is, I had the best night's sleep. <laughs> it's like, mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> because you allowed your body to rest. And so, the tools that you asked about, one of the big ones for me is restorative yoga poses. So restorative yoga is this yoga of rest. We get into a gentle, gentle pose with lots of props. So there's no doing, there's no effort. Once you get in the pose, the poses are held for five, 10, 15 minutes. So that allows the body to kind of slowly unwind and open. Yeah. <laughs> breathing. Um, it actually um, brings our brain waves into an alpha brain wave state. So our beta is our waking state and brings us into alpha, which is slower and a lot more relaxed for the body. Um, so that's one way. And it's a beautiful, beautiful and simple practice. Another is um, for me chanting, because that's part of my devotion, my devotional practice, my spiritual practices is the uh, bhakti yoga, the yoga of devotion. So chanting either in community or uh, even on my own, I do my own personal uh, japa meditation and mantra practice every day. And the repetition and recitation of these mantras over and over kind of is a kind of a bit of a trance-like state that you get into, right. which helps to kind of slow the brain and calm the mind and body. So some of these people probably already do, already, maybe not chanting is probably not as com common, but meditation certainly is. So even just five minutes a day, five minutes or even at different points in the day to stop and just tune into your own breath, tune into your body, the space you're sitting in, having this few minutes to turn inwards can make a big difference in terms of counteracting some of the stress, the chronic stress that we might feel. Um, breath practices so part of yoga is pranayama or breathing practices which we're going to do one together today before we go uh, and when we focus on the breath consciously and we're watching the breath it gives the brain something to do other yes. than being spun out in thought so if we're counting our breath or we're just watching it as it flows in and out of the body our brain is given a task and it loves to do things so if we can direct it to that it can help um, settle the mind and alleviate some of that busy mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I have a couple more so shavasana which is basically just laying down on the ground <laughs> so <laughs> yes. it's, called, it's the last pose you do in most yoga classes and it's corpse yeah. pose so you really it's lying <laughs> down on the ground and just allowing your body to like feel gravity allow gravity to do its work and just rest um, so I love teaching in the middle of the day because I, I, if this is the first time you've laid down since you've got out of bed this morning, like just really enjoy it. So even mm -hmm. five minutes at different points in the day to lay down and stretch the body out can be great. And then in the, my last one that I'm going to share today is yoga nidra. And so it's the yoga of sleep. Oh my gosh. So it's not really sleep because we're alert and we're awake. But it brings us to a different, a, a, I can tell you've done this, you love it. A, a I have, yeah. Yeah, so it brings us into this theta brainwave state, which is this place of creativity, of, um, of deep healing and relaxation. Through, and it's done through, yoga nidra is usually a guided meditation where we do a kind of body scan where we're hitting different points in the body. And, and, and at some point, you may subtly be aware that the, the meditation is still going on, but you really do sink into a very deep place of rest through, through, through this practice. And I, I think it's like magic. Um, yeah. So please share your experience. And if anyone has any other tools that they can add in the chat, that would be in the comments, that would be amazing too, to share. That's beautiful. And yeah, I do want to just briefly share my experience of that, but let's, let's just go through the tools before we move on to that again. So the first one. Restorative yoga. Restorative yoga. Chanting. Chanting. Meditation. Meditation. Breath practices. Breath practice. 
Shavasana. Shavasana. <laughs> lay down on the ground. <laughs> yeah, and yoga nidra. And yoga nidra. And yoga nidra. Yeah, that's beautiful. And uh, I apologize, folks, for these little noises you might hear coming through. I've got to get my my tech person, which is my husband, to um, figure out <laughs> how to stop these little noises coming through. So it's so interesting. Uh, you know, I I, I, uh, I have a, a variety of, of um, daily practices and mindfulness practice, meditation practices. One, I, I have a, um, a cloth down here. It gives a semi-altar kind of uh, piece. I use a lot of objects in my practice. So I have, you know, attachments to objects that help me feel a certain way. And... I feel I'm, I'm, I feel like I may be late to the yoga nidra party. And I just want to say to everyone watching, and, and I'm curious if you have yoga nidra offerings um, that, I, that we can direct people to. Uh, it, I feel like it's my secret weapon now, to be honest. Um, mm. It is, it's uh, uh, unbelievable. I feel a little body response, even just thinking about it. Even when you mentioned it, I started to feel calmer. And I think this is the, the one of the other things I want to say to folks that um, with so many of these practices, when you do them um, in and of themselves, for me, even thinking about yoga nidra helps me. Even thinking about lying down in corpse pose helps me. It's just, you know, your body starts to attune and learn again how to rest, right? Because we almost have to reteach our bodies. Is that... Yeah, I think it's more our minds that we need to reteach. Okay, because our body already our knows, right? It's tired the... and it can think, but it's the mind that keeps us active, even when our bodies are craving rest. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. I think that's one of the hardest pieces, and and I and and for some people, rest might not come so easily. You can't just lay down in corpse pose and be, and rest because there's so much going on. So for some people, like expending energy going for a run then putting a wild song on and dancing like crazy I love it. Yeah. getting some energy out of the body might might alleviate the stress enough that then you can settle into so have your crazy dance party and then take a few minutes to breathe and lay down in shavasana oh i don't know if it's me frozen or you probably me and it's gonna oh create. there we go you're back there we go i'm back yeah i'm back <laughs> So, so I love this and, and I love this and I, I want to uh, kind of move into um, sharing a little bit of your story and, and, and how, mm. you, how you, how you um, came to, to this beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and then we'll, we'll finish off with a practice that I hope the folks can see this because, <laughs> uh, I, and I wanted to show this picture now. Now this is Rachel here yeah. and, and this is me. And yes, that's that in that tummy is a baby. Uh, and that tummy is my first <laughs> first daughter, who is now coming up on 19 years old. So that is how old this photograph is. And Rachel and I were just remarking about how firstly how amazing we look. I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it could have been yesterday. We're really old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. We're actually like we're 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 aging ourselves, but it, I mean, we were teenagers in this photograph. Um, but, you know, this is the last time that, that Rachel and I were in physical presence together when, when, when Andreas and I lived in Toronto, and that was ages ago. And, and uh, so I'm really curious. I'd also like to know a, a little bit about the story of where yeah. you're at. Yeah. yeah, and I think my yoga journey has been over two decades. I mean, it, it started probably when we were working together way back when, and and was a once or twice a week kind of practice and, and a physical practice for me, but there was something about it that just felt really good. And um, it's morphed into this daily practice that really sustains me, that really sustains me from the inside out. And it's in it, and the yo yoga is a more fuller expression of yoga. It's not just the fitness aspect, the asana practice, but it, it, it takes this piece of medicine the medicine of yoga the 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 mm, meditation the inward turning the mantra practice the um, breath practices these are the things that make it a fuller experience of yoga for me and um, about four years ago I took a really intensive bhakti yoga um, course which changed my whole life 
I love, I love kirtan, I love chanting, I love the, the music of yoga. And then I took this course, which was a six day kind of immersion in it. And it took me on this deep inner journey that really shook my entire world. Anything that was not truth just had to shift and had to change. And that meant marriage, it meant relationships, friendships, my work, everything changed on a dime because I just felt like I could no longer, I could no longer live with something that was untrue in my life. And um, it, it also led me to do my yoga teacher training. It led me to release, to write and record and release my first album. It's, it's led me to most recently creating the sacred art collection, which I think I have oh, one. the secret art collection. Oh, oh I'll show you, Jorga. So, like, so I'm creating these beautiful pieces that are the gods and goddesses of yoga, the ones that we that we chant to in, in devotion. So this is Dorga. She's she's badass. Just gonna say, she rides a tiger. So you know all the weapons. She's a warrior. She's lovely. Um, okay. So. <laughs> uh, and then so 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 now now I because I love this so much this is my spiritual practice that every day I, I work with this energy and the energies of these different gods and goddesses the energies of yoga that I I love to share it and so that's what I'm devoting this chapter of my life to is to really share it through music through restorative classes through I do a, a workshops on the god gods and goddesses I do um, personal mantra practice for beginners. I'm creating a new, so next is, um, is um, a yoga subscription program that I'm doing online, which would have meditation, chanting, physical yoga, practice, breath work, all of the good things. So that's what's next. But um, yeah, so that's kind of my journey and where I am now is really um, living this, uh, uh, stepping into this um, part of my life and my world that has meant so much to me and um, really helping other people to get to um, know yoga a little bit more. Yeah. Mm. And to really find that place within themselves, right? That they can connect with through yoga. Mm. Oh, so beautiful. And, and um, before we move to, to sharing a practice, so uh, folks who are joining us, I see there's quite a few folks who are joining us. Um, give us a shout out and let us know you're here. Uh, mm. It's, it's interesting. I was looking around when you when you showed the sacred uh, art piece because the tiger is extremely important to me in my work. And I've actually got a little tiger down here on my mm -hmm. cloth that I was going to pick up, but I can't quite get there. Uh, you know, I, I love this. And I, I wanted to pick up on the word devotion um, because there's, there's, uh, there's um, a thread that you're naming here that I'm seeing in so many of the women around me, so many of the women in this community, so many of the women that I work with um, who are entering this phase of our lives and, and perhaps wouldn't use the word devotion. Uh, for me, I would use the word um, self-actualization or purpose or commitment. Commitment actually is the word I would use for myself, commitment. Mm -hmm. um, this commitment to the realization of I guess my work on the planet and and through a devotional lens through a lens of it's a different lens it's a really different lens than i had in my younger life mm -hmm. uh, and there's something so beautiful about this word devotion about a depth of practice that is consistent and deepening and evolving and um you know, I, I, I love that word and, and I feel it in, again, in so many of the women I'm working with that uh, are, are on the cusp of trying to name that devotion for themselves, you know, mm -hmm. on the cusp of, mm -hmm. and I'm so fascinated by the part of your story where you said, okay, you know, this happened and then everything else had to go or a significant, a yeah. huge, uh, um yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't I'm not it wasn't easy and oh, like uh, you, you see some of the goddesses with the big swords that just I was about away. to do a sword yeah it, it felt yeah. like it felt like that it felt like that and and it was necessary and I wouldn't have changed it I wouldn't no. have changed it uh, and um 
Sometimes it is. We call upon I've got, I've got Kali here with the sword with the severed head. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> right, and, right. Uh, and like and it's it's sometimes it's sometimes it has to be quick and effective and a little bit harsh change. And then and then the softness comes. <laughs> As well, the thing is the softness, right? So, yeah, and that immediate sword cut just creates its space. I mean, it's oof. yeah. Okay, um, I'm <sighs> I'm feeling. I know, I'm feeling so many threads that we could follow, and we're almost uh, almost at time. So, for the last few minutes, I would I would mm. um, love to in, invite you to um, to lead us in practice, uh, and just as as Rachel's um, probably already prepared to do that. Uh, uh, I want to remind folks about how you can find Rachel. So I think probably the easiest way is sanctuary dot is your sanctuary. your home. I guess. And I want yes. to just let folks know that if you would love to try a free uh, restorative yoga class with me, I teach Wednesdays from seven till eight um, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And um, if you just go in and register for the class on my website, uh, www.sanctuary.as slash yoga, you type in the code REST, R-E-S-T, and you will get a free class. So you can sign up for whatever, uh, whatever date works best for you. But the code is good until Valentine's Day. So Okay, so let me get this into the chat here. Actually, let's do this. After. Uh, let's, let me put it after. I'll just Thank add it so in the chat. Actually, so, I'm not I'm not on Facebook, so you'll have to add it in the chat. I'm on okay. Zoom. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Well, no, afterwards you can add it in the chat. Yes, is yeah. what I mean. So okay, okay brilliant. Brilliant. And I'll be there just to just to say to everyone, I'm gonna be there. Yeah, I'll put in folk. All right. <laughs> Great. Okay. We are all yours. Well, first, let me just say thank you for having me because we'll just zoom right out afterwards, right? So and thank you to all the people that are here um, joining this conversation with us. Um, yes, yeah, sending you much love and blessing. So let's start by finding a comfortable seated position. And if you feel like laying down on the ground in Shavasana, mm -hmm, go right ahead. But if you're in your chair, <clears throat> hmm, finding a place of comfort, perhaps lengthening your spine, Feeling that long line of energy from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Perhaps tucking the chin in just a little. And just beginning to notice your breath as it enters and leaves the body. Hmm. Bring your attention down to your belly, perhaps placing a hand or hands on your belly. And seeing if with every inhale, we can expand the belly, relax the belly. And on the exhale, feeling it contract slightly. Inhaling down to the belly. We're going to come into a three part breath. So we're going to inhale deep into the belly, up and through the rib cage, and then up to the uppermost parts of our lungs, close to our collarbones. So inhaling from the bottom through the ribs, all the way to the uppermost part of our lungs, deep inhale. And a long, slow exhale from the top through the middle to our belly last. Inhaling from the belly, through the ribs, the uppermost portion of our lungs, and exhaling from the top through the ribs, through the belly. And keep breathing in this rhythmic way from bottom to top and from top to bottom. Long, slow inhale, and long, slow exhale. And 
And as we breathe, we inhale, and a pause at the end of our inhale, exhale, and pause at the end of the exhale. Inhaling, and pause, exhaling, and pause, inhaling, and pause, exhale, and pause, inhale, and pause, exhale, and pause, and returning to your natural breath, and just noticing what you notice about your breath, about your body, maybe the state of your mind, your emotional state. When you're ready, just bring your hands to heart center on the chest. Anjali Mudra in prayer position. Let's take a nice deep inhale together in through the nose and out through the mouth. One more time, just releasing in through the nose, out through the mouth. The divine in me honors the divine in each of you that are with us today. Namaste. Mm, namaste. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. Pleasure. <laughs>